Strike of Neos was released in February 2007. This set introduced the Six Samurai, an archetype of warriors that revolve around swarming the field in an attempt to gain advantage over the opponent. Notable cards in this set include Neo Spatian Grand Mole, Great Shogun Shien, Advanced Ritual Art, Pulling the Rug, and a card that would be the first of many that could interact with the opponent from the hand at quick effect speed, DD Crow. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh progression series. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels good today sitting back in the winner's circle. It's been a hot minute. I'm not going to lie. Hopefully today, though, I can seal another win, keep a win streak going. I think by now I'm starting to get good at deck building with the help of some friends. And I think uh, today we might be able to seal another win. Strike of Neos we're opening today. Oh, and Alex is going to be able to tell you all about it instead of me today. But for me, on my hand, I got to spin the wheel. Hopefully get some tournament packs to bust open because we're opening TP8 today. Alex may have gotten lucky with his TP7 pulling double breaker. But in TP8, I can get something much better than breaker. I can pull, ladies and gentlemen, a Harpy's Feather Duster. It's in the super rare slot, so it's not guaranteed. It's not easy to get, but there's a chance to if I can roll a tournament back. Kind of want to stay away from all the wild cards because I don't think anything from Cyber Dark Impact was relevant. So let's see what we can get after we spin this wheel. Beautiful. That's what I love to see. The tournament packs. TP8. Let's bust him open. All right, so three packs, tournament pack eight. Where are they at there? Tournament pack eight, the last of the tournament packs here. And then we move on to the champ champion packs. I don't even know what we move on to next. I think it might be turbo pack. Three of them. Let's get going. Three cards per pack. Feather duster. Feather duster. Let's go. Okay. Ultimate offering. I'm not at all upset about that. That is a banned card that I really, really wanted. That's going to be something useful later down the line. Not quite incredible now. Let's go to the second pack here. That's about what I expect to get from all the packs, honestly. That is, uh, that's not good. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, one last pack here. Tournament pack eight. Duster. Ah, that's a super rare, man. That could have been a duster. Duname's Dark Witch, an 1800 light vanilla. Nothing special there. Pretty cool, though. Look at that price. 94 bucks for a super. Is that even correct? Holy crap. I'll be damned. <laughs> that is what the price is for that thing. That's insane. Guys, we pulled a $100 card. That's crazy. Eh, tournament pack eight has fallen a little bit short. That's not too bad. Let's get into our box, though, of Strike of Neos. I gotta hand it to Gage. He was able to bring it all together last episode and claim that victory. So congratulations, Gage. You're definitely going to need it, buddy, because you still have a long way to go. But now we're going to be delving into Strike of Neo. Strike of Neos was released on February 28th, 2007, and actually debuted one of the coolest archetypes ever being Six Samurai. You can see right here with Grandmaster of the Six Samurai, a fun little story back at the sneak peek for this event. Grandmaster of the Six Samurai was also the promo card as a super rare version. You see here it's a secret rare. But what was cool about this was that the promo card itself was going for about 20 or 25 dollars and if you wanted to go and participate in the sneak peek it was only 20 so you'd get the promo and your five packs but since grandmaster was 20 to 25 bucks it was literally like just getting free packs as long as you could sell off the grandmasters and uh, that's just a funny little story i think i ended up getting like six or seven sneak peeks because they didn't care you were able to just get as many as you want back in the day some stores still do that let's be honest but this was more when they did it like large official events not just like store hosted it was kind of more like a regional where a bunch of people would show up i'm not sure if this is when upper deck still owned everything or whatever but still an interesting story nonetheless one card that i am incredibly excited about is neo spatian grand mole this card is actually very powerful if you have initiative or if you have tempo at the start of the damage step whatever neo spatian grand mole is battling it will bounce both the mole and that monster back to the respective player's hands so if you're ahead and you have board presence and your opponent just setting a monster you can just normal summon grand mole bounce it back to their hand and the mole and get in with whatever you already have on field you're not developing your board but you're keeping your opponent at bay and in a much slower format like this 
this grand mole is actually extremely powerful. Here you can see all these six samurai cards. All of them have a special effect if there are multiple six samurai on the field. Yaichi pops face down. Spells and traps come on. I believe pops face up. Spells and traps. Yuriza can attack directly. Nisashi can attack twice. Zanji destroys anything it battles with at the end of the damage step. And Iro is kind of like Sasuke Samurai where it's able to uh, just destroy a face down monster immediately. But it's also 1700 attack so that's nice. There's also Great Shogun Shien which if you have two or more six samurais you can just special summon this for free and it's 2500 so that's pretty big and it makes it such your opponent can only activate one spell or trap card per turn so it's a uh, pretty devastating in that instance i don't know if we have enough cards to make a six samurai strategy in this particular episode we might have to wait till the later sets once we get some of the more playable monsters but this was the first you know introductory set for the six samurais and their initial support wasn't the worst now this is what i'm the most terrified about there's more dark world support in this set and i know gauge in the last episode pivoted off of that but if there's a reason to go back to dark world it's going to be this rainbow is not necessarily the best it has to specifically be discarded by an opponent's card effect but if it is it basically regekis or harpies feather dusters the opponent so that's pretty good but kaki and gren are what i'm more worried about if they're discarded by a card effect kaki can just target a monster on the field and destroy it and gren can target a spell or trap and destroy it and why that's so good is because dark world lightning then can hit multiple cards it gives him just much better dark world cards that are going to interact with my cards and it gives him a much better pool of playables so again i don't know if he's going to go that route because he seemed to have a lot of success in the previous episode by deviating so we're gonna have to see what happens dd crow is also a card that originated in strike of neos and this is a hand trap that still sees play to this very day you pitch it at quick effect speed and you can banish a card out of your opponent's graveyard it's a nice one for one it helps interact with your opponent and stop their plays for the purposes of our series we don't have tons of graveyard recursion i guess i could use it to stop him from getting to emperor if he has like only one light or one dark but is that really worth it probably not maybe in the future when we get more recursion synergy this could become more playable but a nice card to pick up nonetheless twister is actually a huge piece of removal for both of us to have access to it's a quick play spell you pay 500 life points target a face up spell or trap card on the field and destroy that target again we don't have tons of spell and trap removal gauge has dust tornado i have breaker you know there are cards that we have but if gauge is really worried about cards like macrocosmos and dimensional fisher he could just play a couple copies of twister to really just take care of them and then he doesn't have to worry about it ever again and the last point that i wanted to touch on with with this set was the reintroduction of secret rares in core sets so initially there was two secret rares per set now we have eight and that was how it continued to be for quite some time the secret rares actually didn't really have much to do with the set in general that they were printed in as you can see here these are tons of fairy support cards neo parshath meltiel sage of the sky harvest angel of wisdom snova summoner radiant jural gelin duo i mean like these cards actually demanded outrageously high price tags because they were so rare and people didn't didn't know if the next best deck of the format was going to require some of these secret rares but again just a really interesting part of Yu-Gi-Oh's history that we have these cards reintroduced after they were gone from core sets for so long but that about wraps it up for strike of neos we've got 24 packs to open so let's get cracking all right 24 packs strike of neos let's see if we get lucky this time around Mainly looking for, what am I looking for? Cards like Grand Mole, the new Dark World stuff is going to be perfect with our package. Card like Dark World Dealings would be nuts. I don't want to wait too much longer. Let's just see what we get. Cocky's not like terrible. It's the one that pops a monster when it's discarded. That's actually pretty good. But I'm mainly looking for good ways to discard. And the best one is the Super Rare Slot Dark World Dealings. So, pack number one. Sure, we'll take it. Not too bad. Let's go to number two. Man, already an ultra rare off the bat. The Grand Neos. Never want to see that bad boy. It is what it is. An ultra rare impact number two. That luck just keeps coming. Let's keep busting. Another ultra rare. And a Grand Mole. Okay, I'm going to take the Grand Mole. But this Air Neos, dude, what are these ultra rares, man? We're pack number five. We've gotten two ultra rares. Both of them, worthless. But hey, that is a first edition Air Neos. Whoa. I'm more excited about the Grand Mole. Grand Mole is sick. I'd like to pull two more Grand Mole. That'd be nice. Wow, great Shogun Sheen. Oh, look, we're getting all the six Samurais, too. I'm trying to think which ones are in the higher rarity slot. 
I think a lot of them are in the lower rarity, but Shogun Sheen's a pretty sick one to have. I'm not going to lie. That's dope. All right, 24 packs of Strike of Neos. I'm excited. I don't really know what I'm particularly looking for in this set because nothing in this set is really game changing. We do get some nice cards that are very niche in their use, but let's go ahead and see what we get. See, this is what I'm talking about. Gren and Kaki are both common. So if Gage does want to go back to that Dark World strategy, he's probably going to have play sets of both of these. And that's kind of frightening. Advanced Ritual Art also debuted in Strike of Neos. And this is a key piece of the Demise OTK strategy. I know I have access to Demise because I did pull one and I think I actually got one as a reward from another episode. I'm not exactly sure, but I have one or two copies. And I think I also got Doom Dozers as well. Problem is, I don't have the rest of the pieces. You know, I don't have enough Senjus or Manjus to be able to really be able to capitalize on this. It'd be really fun to blow Gage out with Demise, but I don't think it's going to happen. All right, so our first copy of DD Crow. I'm not going to lie, I'm really happy to see this. It may not be the best card at this exact moment, but later on, this card is going to be huge. Transmigration Prophecy is also a very cool card. This card was actually on the semi-limited list for several years because of some like loops you could do or something like that. But this card's kind of like DD Crow, but in a trap form. Instead of targeting a card, you target two cards and it can be in both players' graveyards and you shuffle them back into the respective owner's deck. So instead of being able to just take care of one card, you can take care of two. So for instance, if Gage has like two light monsters, I can shuffle both of them back into his deck to stop Emperor. Problem is he gets the resource back, but at least it deters Emperor. Kind of a neat card, plus the artwork is really sick. Are you kidding me? No, I don't want more. Oh, I don't want more Grand Neoses, dude. I want super rares. Nova Summoner in the secret rare slot. Oh, I forgot all this fairy stuff is secret rare. Probably never going to find the chance to be able to actually play a full fairy deck because everything is literally secret rare. But hey, I think this is the first set in a while they brought back secrets. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that's right. Destroyed by battle sent to graveyard special, a light fairy with 1500 or less attack. Isn't this just like a worse shining angel? What? Oh, I guess if sanctuary is on the field, I could add air knight. Dude, I have air knight Parshath and sanctuary of the sky. Bro, I have the whole deck together. That's crazy. Second grand mold, number two, number two. Love to see it. Really good card. Hopefully you get the three there. I haven't pulled anything that really has wowed me yet, but um, hey. Maybe I'll play Air Knight Parshath with the uh, the combo there with Nova Summoner. Oh, baby. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The third Grand Mole. You love to see him. I actually might play him or side him or something. This card's actually just bonkers. Really great pickup. Really happy with that. Oh, yes. Dark World Dealings. The first one. It'd be nice if I had more of those, but that's super sick. I am not going to lie. That's so incredible to have. Dark World Dealings in tandem with all of our Dark World cards is nuts. That's just the, the best way to put it. It's nuts. Wow. So there's an ultimate rare elemental hero glow Neos. Again, I've been having some really weird ultimate rare luck lately, and a lot of the cards in these sets can be ultimate rares, but that's a crazy one. That's really, really cool. Again, for the purposes of an online environment, it doesn't really matter that it's ultimate rare, but for anyone who's a fan of elemental heroes and ultimate rares, they would have loved to see this on camera. There's a copy of Twister. Again, this isn't going to be the most pivotal or crucial card, but if we ever get to a point where one of us is playing a lot of floodgates and we don't have access to a good spell and trap removal, Twister could be a card that we can side deck, and it's a nice way to kind of just one for one those types of cards. And I guess the ultimate rares keep coming. There's an ultimate rare neos force are we gonna play it absolutely not is it cool of course it is <laughs> wow so not only did we get an ultimate rare glow neos we also just got an ultra rare glow neos to accompany it again these elemental hero fusions are always at like the top end of the rarity scale in a lot of these packs for quite some time so it's really weird that a lot of the chase cards for such a long period of Yu-Gi-Oh's history weren't really too desirable by the majority of players aside from people who are just in love with the anime because the cards themselves aren't exactly that great and it made the top end of these packs actually not near Really is desirable card trade card trader was a super rare who would who wanted a super rare card trader back in the day really probably like the worst pull of the set man that does not feel good that's another super rare though i wish it was dealings wow another super oh dd crow i didn't get any crows yet but look gene warped werewolf two thousand attack man he's huge don't expect to play it but these super rares are coming maybe i can keep up this luck here with the supers on the end here get another dark world dealing all right last two packs all together i'm super satisfied with this opening actually i don't think i've gotten anything too terrible uh twister i got only one dd crow which is kind of unfortunate but i got three grand which you know i think that's pretty all right 
wrapping it up with nothing too special. I'm actually pretty pleased with this. I got a secret rare. I think all the hollow pulls were pretty nuts, actually, besides the ultra rares. I didn't want any of the ultras. All right, well, let's slap this into Dueling Book. Let's see what we can come up with. There's another copy of Twister. You know, this is pretty good. Again, if we ever get into that position where we need more spell and trap removal, Twister is a good way to go about it. It was actually played back in the day because back then there weren't many good options for spell and trap removal. So Twister was what people had to use. Well, guys, we only have a few packs left and uh, it hasn't been looking too great. Only one copy of DD Crow. Here's a hollow gene warped Warwolf. This is just a 2000 attack level four, which is kind of cool. But again, that's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. It still doesn't run over something like Gravekeeper Spy because they were still hesitant to go over that 2K threshold for a level four vanilla. But you know, it is what it is. Can't really do much about it. Here's our last pack. Let's at least get a DD Crow. And oh, wow, we got a rainbow. Uh, again, I'm not playing the Dark World strategy. So Gage would have liked that more than me. And again, that's debatable but Cocky and Gren are way better for him. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for our opening. Again, it was fine. We got a lot of the six samurai cards, which we're not going to need till later on anyway. And uh, let's go ahead and throw this into dueling book and see what we can come up with. We got a lot of work to do. All right. So here's what we're looking at for today. There's not a lot of changes with it. I'm going to start off by saying that there's not a lot of changes. The most changes I made were actually the side deck. As you can see, I decided to do something interesting. I don't know if I'll actually apply it, but we'll see if it comes down to it. If I'm really feeling it, I might smoke screen into a dark world strategy. I have the majority of the cards here, the lightnings, the one dealing, and all the good dark worlds in there. I might, if Alex is deciding to switch up his strategy away from the macro cosmos, that might be a good plug in there to throw him off guard. Then again, I don't know what he's playing. If he's still playing Jar again too, that's something great. But as again, to see what he's playing. I barely access the side deck at all anyways, so using it to like do something wild like this is okay with me. The only change to the main deck is actually super small. I took out the Treeborn Frog because I've just been so so depressed with it. It's been so bad. Treeborn Frog has not done anything, so I traded it for a second Gravekeeper's Guard. I think uh, these Gravekeepers, the Spies and the Guard against his current strategy of the Macrocosmos aggro deck, they're so good. 1900 is huge, 2000 is massive. It's just way too big for him to get over with his Breakers or his DD Survivors, anything. So if it comes down to it, these cards are the best for it, I think. Altogether, though, I didn't really change much else with it. I thought about putting another Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, but decided against it. So I'm pretty okay with this list here. I think it's going to work well. If we decide to smoke into the uh, Dark World, hey, it might be a, an epic game amongst us here, but uh, we'll see what Alex is on to once we hop into the Thunderdome. Good luck, Alex. You're going to need a brother. Okay, guys, so this is the deck we are bringing to today's duel. A little bit different. We didn't really go with anything from Strike of Neos because nothing was too relevant, but we did make some changes to the deck here. So the most notable change is that I'm no longer playing the Banishers of the Radiance. The thing is, if Gage is not playing Dark World, this card is not really that good. Yes, it does keep him off Emperor, but I do have a lot of other cards that deter Emperor regardless. So I'm not really super worried about about trying to play protect the banisher anymore and if he's playing a much more well-rounded deck banisher just really can't make the cut i need more cards that are going to either proactively generate me cards or just dismantle his board and take cards away from him with that said though we have our two breakers our cyber dragon our decoichi one exile force one gravekeeper guard and three spy back in the main deck i just want to have as much advantage generation as possible these cards are great for walling up they're very difficult for gauge to deal with and so i want to play as many copies of this as i can one kaiku kaiku Kaiku's still in the main. He's a great beater. He is actually deterrent to Emperor and can just chip away at his graveyard to ensure he doesn't have the pieces to get there. We still have one Magical Merchant, one Magician of Faith, one Mobius... I don't know about this one. I might regret this, but if he's on the Dark World, I might just auto-lose if this card resolves. However, he wasn't on it last episode, and I think because he actually saw success, he may not want to go with it this episode. So the thing is, Morphing Jar is just an absurd card. If I open Jar and, like, any combination of, like, four spells and traps, I can just go plus five, and he just maybe goes plus one at the most. It's just a huge swing in tempo. Yeah, it gets him closer to Emperor, but I should just be swimming in cards that it shouldn't be a problem. We'll have have to see if I regret this decision. Then we have one Mystic Swords in level two to deal with his copies of Gravekeeper Spy, Gravekeeper Guard, any of the flip effect monsters, Swordsman can just easily clean them up. Two Snipe Hunter, I only have two copies, which is kind of annoying, but it's just a really good piece of removal and it's on a 1500 body to boot. I'm also playing the one Zaborg this time around. Zaborg's a really great card in tandem with these copies of Spy, gives me some great tribute fodder. It allows me to pop the set monsters that he has like Spy so that they don't trigger. I wasn't playing this in the last episode. I probably should have been, but the thing is we're playing it now 
now so we get to see that power for ourselves for the spells two book of moon gauge is actually back on jinzo and jinzo is probably the reason why we lost the last set so book of moon is back in the main deck to kind of counteract jinzo just to ensure that we have a card that can at least proactively do something to stop it to a degree so our traps can maybe get back online and we can possibly deal with it we're also playing much larger monsters than we were in the past and one of the issues with book of moon previously is i was playing a bunch of monsters that had just measly attack stats so now that we have like breaker cyber dragon kaiku these larger threats book of moon's good because my monsters will actually be able to get over it jinzo's only 1500 defense so i actually have a good combination of cards that can help deal with it dark hole dimensional fissure i'm still on the dimensional fissure and the macro cosmos because i have really zero interaction with cards in my graveyard aside from like magician of faith so the thing is if i can just have these up the whole game while we're just playing back and forth and he's not getting the graveyard closer to emperor i think that's perfectly fine these cards are kind of do nothing cards and they're really bad in the face of something like phoenix wing wind blast but they're good enough that i think they make the cut and we'll see how that goes heavy storm one my body is a shield pot of greed regeki two smashing ground and snatch steel i cut my body back because since we're not playing protect the banisher anymore i felt like we don't need as many of this but this is still nice to maybe stop a bottomless a dark hole just some sort of disruption that he may have for the trap cards two bottomless two compulse imperial order macro three phoenix wing wind blast torrential tribute and trap dust shoot still plenty of ways to deal with emperor and i'm feeling pretty good about that for the side deck three banisher two chaos sorcerer one knight assailant two white magical hat if gauge is not on dark world these are 100 coming back in the main deck and the king slayer will start dismantling gauge's hand spell cards two brain control the second my body is a shield and for traps two mind crush and two sakuretsu armor these are all just to make minor adjustments as i see fit depending on the matchup if he's going back with the dark world route i'll probably put the banishers back in and if we see the need to play brain control just to get super aggressive we might throw that in as well but i'm feeling pretty good about this i feel like i have a strategy no matter which route gauge decides to go with and uh, i'm really curious to see if morphing jar is the right call but let's not make you guys wait any longer it is time to duel Gage, congratulations on your win in the last episode. I think it was definitely deserved, although I did have 4 billion trap cards in the face of your Jinzo. But you know what? That's Yu-Gi-Oh! sometimes, so you definitely earned it. Let me tell you, Alex, every win I get is totally deserved because I'm the greatest the game has ever seen. But I don't know if I'd agree with that necessarily, but <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe my record doesn't really reflect that. But <laughs> uh, right. speaking of the greatest the game's ever seen, though, we do have to shout out our patron. And it uh, looks like we have a relative to Mr. Joey Wheeler here because Tim Wheeler is our patron. We are shouting out for this episode. So maybe some of that Brooklyn rage is going to uh, channel you to victory in this Strike of Neos episode game. Are you ready? <laughs> the Brooklyn rage. I am ready, dude. <laughs> we got to do a throw with a throwbacks, right? All right. Yeah. We're rolling that die. We're going to see if we can out. Oh, 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 oh. The die is working every yeah, time yeah. now. See, Alex, brain to brain. I can't be beat on RPS. But when it comes to a dice that you're just factoring in, it just it beats me every time. You got to be smarter than the die gauge, but uh, I'm going to go second. I think we've decided that that's still conclusively the best way to go about this. I still think and, it's uh, the good best, luck. too. Good luck, dude. All right, well, booting off right off the bat, at least I get full knowledge of what you've got today because I'm playing Confiscation. See, that's one of the reasons I don't like you going first, but when you look at my hand, you're not going to be happy with what you're about to see. All right, let's take a look. Oh, my God! <laughs> It's good, but it's also not good at the same time. You know, like the Dark Hole Regeki is really good, but then the other three cards are kind of like, eh. <laughs> They're like, meh, yeah, at least you don't have any monster presence, but I, I, I have to. I have to discard that Regeki. That's way too good. I figured you were going to pick that. All right. Let's see here. You don't have any monsters, huh? Interesting. I'll set this monster, and I will set the spell trap. And I'll just have my turn. Go ahead, dude. This is where I top deck the pot of greed to uh, just completely throw you <laughs> off. I'm going to go ahead and set three cards face down. Okay. And I'm just going to pass. That is a lot. Uh, I'll draw. All right, cool. Uh, I'll just uh, flip up my witch. Okay. And I'll normal summon Grandmaster Sasuke. Sure. I'll go battle phase. Try to go for sure. 11. 29. First. I'll let it go. take it all? All right, awesome. That's take good. it all. Good enough for me. I will just set a card, and I'll just end my turn then. I will draw, and that's pretty good. We're going to go ahead and special summon ourselves a Cyber Dragon off the top. Ooh, that is pretty good. Uh, is that fine? 
thinking about it. Unfortunately, that is okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, well, let's go ahead and head over to Battle Phase, see if we can get into this Sasuke. Uh, yeah, Sasuke's fine. I'll take 300. Okay. I will go to main two. I will set a fourth card in the imperm column, and I will pass for turn. <laughs> I'll draw. Dude, that's... This is where you blow me out with that feather duster that you oh, pulled in man. TPA. No, I wish, bro. Holy crap. <laughs> That'd be disgusting. Um, that cyber dragon's such a problem. It's so good, isn't it? <laughs> I'll just uh, set two. Go down to zero cards. and I'll... Oh, wait, let me put that witch in defense, too. Let me not be a dummy. There you go. Now I'll allow turn. it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Another set, huh? Interesting. Let's go to battle. I'm going to attack over this set monster. Okay, it's a Gravekeeper spy. So okay, so you I'm will get another spy from this. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of okay with that. It doesn't really change the equation here too much. I'm going to set a fifth card face down in my main phase two and pass the turn. Dear God, Alex, you got everything, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw for turn. Ooh, that's a really good draw. I'll play Smashing Ground. You gonna flip that, uh, my body? Hmm. No, I'm just gonna flip this order. Okay, thinking. All right, this is gonna feel so good to do, because I expected you to do that. I'm gonna play Dust Tornado, and I'm gonna hit your order. Ooh, that changes things significantly. In response to that, I'm going to chain Book of Moon and target my Cyber Dragon. Okay, thinking. Are we gonna have a big chain war here? <laughs> uh, this is like, it's looking like it, dude. We got a lot going on here. That all resolves, that's all fine. Okay, so chain resolves backwards. Book of Moon will set my Cyber Dragon. Dust Tornado will destroy Imperial Order and Smashing Ground will resolve, but it doesn't have a target because there's currently no face-up monster on my field. Yeah, so with the knowledge that it has 1600 defense because Cyber Dragon's just oddly big, I will just pass turn. Go ahead, dude. As if it couldn't get any better, right? Yep. <laughs> I will draw. Okay. Well, I'm going to flip this Cyber Dragon back up. I'm also going to use a card well, that you're really... S oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to macro let me finish, Cosmo. Dude. Oh, okay. Did you so, think that was macro? You block... Why would I play macro in this? That is a bottomless trap, my friend. Well, this is where the My Body is a Shield will come in handy. I thought so. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip up macro, though, however, now. That was what I was uh, getting at, yeah, because now we're going to take out this Witch of the Black Forest here. And now I'm going to think because that would really suck if I lose that. Yeah, unfortunately... <sighs> Dude, that sucks. That's going to be okay. <laughs> I'm going to lose the witch. That does suck. I'm going to go to main phase two, and you know what? I'm just going to put the pressure on. I'm going to smash and ground that Gravekeeper spine and get that out of here, too. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want any sort of uh, tribute summoning shenanigans coming down here, so we're not going to leave you with any monsters. I'll draw. Damn, that sucks. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just gonna pass. Go ahead. What a war that we just had with all that yeah, back, all, bro. Yeah, <laughs> all that chaining and everything. I'm going to normal summon Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer and Ooh, keep the pressure on. He's Let's destroying. try to get him for 18. I'm going to take the full... What is this, 39? 39. Kaiku is going to trigger. We're going to get that spy and that Sasuke out of the graveyard. No emperor anytime soon for you. Go ahead, buddy. I'll draw. That's a really good draw. I'll start my turn by activating Dark Hole. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty good. You Not much we can do there. Banish oh, those. Get, get those out of there. Yep. Alex, you thought that was pretty good, though. But wait till you see this. I'm going to play Pot of Grief. <laughs> oh my god was that off the top that had to be off the top you that was used that last yeah that turn. was off the top that was crazy all right unfortunately wow. don't have anything to follow it up with though i'll just set pass this pot of greed is banished sir as well as oh, this dark ex hole excuse get me. that out of here yeah, let get me, that out. let me We're loop it with the zero with magician of faith side <laughs> yeah. hey i don't you could still be on that demon <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i'll drop the turn i will just set and I'll pass turn. I will draw. I'm gonna flip this Gravekeeper guard and bounce your monster. <sighs> That's fine. I'll put the card back in my hand. Battle phase. Oh, only a thousand. Good gracious. That's fine. I will pass. Go ahead. Interesting. I'll draw. Ooh. Ooh. What does that change? That's interesting. I'm gonna normal summon Snipe Hunter. Uh. That's annoying but is it okay i don't know <laughs> i'm going to activate wing blast okay uh discard banish the card for cost i'm going to banish 
a redundant wing blast target snipe hunter. That's fine. I'll stack this. Oh, do I want to do that? Yeah, I have to. All right, I'll snack this night. That's fine. Okay. Uh, well, you better draw the nut. Go ahead, dude. It's really kind of what it all hinges on. Ooh. Oh, I don't like that. Do that. it. What'd you get? Come on, <laughs> it can't be that good. Normal summon snipe hunter. Yep. Okay. So now I have a weird decision to make here. I could just try and go for game. I could also attempt to use snipe to pop something because if you have something to like deal with this, it's kind of bad. Let's go battle phase. Let's see you have it. That's fine. I'll take 15. And then attempt to go for game. I'm going to have to compulse that guard back to hand. Ooh. Okay desperation i'm kind of glad that i attacked in that specific order although i mean you could have compulsed either one so i don't think yeah, it yeah. too much kind of happy to see guard back okay so you're drawing a snipe hunter for turn i know that snipe hunter can just kind of dismantle my board a little bit here i don't think you're killing me because you don't have any graves set up yeah there's no way you can set up for like a super big push here i think we just pass go ahead okay i'll draw Draws the Snipe Hunter. I guess I'll have to normal summon the Snipe Hunter. That's and fine. I will use the effect of Snipe Hunter. Target your Snipe Hunter. Miss, 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 miss. All right, there we Game. go. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Okay, okay. Battle phase 15. No response. That goes through. Okay. All right. I know you have guard. I'll just, uh, I'll have to pass turn. Go ahead. Straw. Is it good enough? Oh. Did you get something good? Is that, is that the end of the game? It might be. <laughs> Heavy storm? Yeah, that's fine. It was a my body. Oh, well, actually, that just won me the game because you knew the last card in my hand. I forgot! <laughs> I forgot all this time! I didn't have an out for it, though. That's Oh, that's so unfortunate. I forgot. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good game. Yep. Dark Hole's going to take out the Snipe Hunter. Guard <laughs> is going to come in. That was close, though. That, that was, was very that close. Was. I Alex, dude, man, that was a that was a close game, dude. That was like right down to the wire. I can't believe I forgot you had that dark hold too. Amazing, that's what to be fair. I, I don't know how much it really mattered. I don't know what else is in your hand, but yeah, it was really close. I mean, that's how these games are. These games are just getting so close now. I think our last few sets have just always gone to game three. And yeah, those little those little differences can uh, be the difference between win or losing. So let's see one of those decisions play out right now. Are you going to opt for me to go first? It looks like it always, you know, got to get that extra card. Good luck, dude. Of course. All right. Good luck to you as well. I will start off with a set and I'm gonna make things a little bit difficult for you right off the bat I'm gonna activate DeFi and I will set a card face down go ahead cool I'll draw right we'll kick it off strong I'll summon DD warrior lady to start off here that's fine all right I'll go battle phase let's see if this DD warrior lady can get in it can it is a Dekoichi would you like to banish um no you can have the card and then Dekoichi's gonna get banished regardless but <laughs> <laughs> I will draw a card, and Dekoichi will get banished. Cool. Uh, I'll go main phase two. I will set two, and I'll end my turn. All right. I will draw. Let's kick things off with a nice smashing ground. Um. Yeah, smashing ground is fine. My warrior okay. lady will get banished. It will. And we're going to follow that up, Gage, with the King Slayer himself making his grand return. No, you brought him back. I did bring him back. I don't feel I don't feel like you're on these dark worlds. And if you are, you know, you just outplayed me 100%. So let's see if you got anything to stop this. Otherwise, the Kingslayer is going to be back to slaying. All right. Well, I do have something to stop it. I am going to flip up Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Okay. I'll pitch a smashing ground out of my hand and I'll okay. stack your white magical app. You know, I'm kind of like perfectly okay with that i feel if you were wasting two cards on this white magical hat that is fine i well, will put this to the top of my deck all right we'll go to main phase two we'll just set ourselves a card and pass the turn cool i will draw it's like white magical hat did its job anyway you just got to pick which card you got with it. <laughs> yeah it did do its job <laughs> man tough decisions dude i'll normal summon freed the brave ward wander i always say warrior it's wander he's wandering i'm going to torrential this okay um do I do that? Uh, no, I don't. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Wander will get banished here. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll just pass. Go ahead, dude. Well, you already know where this turn's going. Yep. Can we get in? 
Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to. I'm going to have to, <laughs> again, two oh, for one it. Oh, wow. Yeah. White magical head. Four for one. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I got a four for one this. Dude, I don't know if I can hold on to this card. Um, Does someone have the Chaos Emperor in their hand? Yeah, I do, actually. And I'm going <laughs> to... This is wild. I'm going to have to banish it because I just have no fuel. And I'm going to have to pop that white magical. Wow. Hmm. Don't have my body. I swear, you got the my body back there. That's so <laughs> gross. I don't think I would have even hesitated to flip it up in all honesty. I do have a decision to make here, though. I mean, he technically got Emperor out of your hand. What am I really scared of at that point? Yeah, I'll let him go. So you have banished the white magical hat. All right, cool. And I'll pass the turn. I'll draw. We have become down to a very simplified game state. Yes, <laughs> very simplified. I'll just set and I will pass the list. Okay, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! as Kazuki Takahashi intended. That is potentially a very good draw. I'm gonna go ahead and set, and I will pass the turn. Interesting, I'll draw. Gage, I gotta say, I feel like it's been a while since our old rivalry of uh, White Magical Hat Emperor have both been on the field to yeah. some degree. <laughs> it's been a hot minute since you've seen them too. I mean, White Magical Hat still did his job of uh, dragon slaying there and pitching it out of my hand. <laughs> you just uh, did it, you know, forthcomingly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, Alex, this is such a rough spot, dude. I like this don't is. know what to do. I agree with you. <laughs> I'm kind of in the same boat. You wouldn't think with this few amount of cards on the field that we would have choice paralysis, but it's actually very difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip up the Gravekeeper's Guard, and I'm going to bounce back that monster. Sure, that is fine. I'm going to go Battle Phase, and I'm just going to poke you for 1,000. That is the first damage of the game, incredibly Yeah, enough. I'm going to go Main Phase 2. Nothing feels good. I'll just go... You're struggling over yeah, there. You're nothing, struggling. Nothing feels, like, incredible here. Nothing feels, like, great. And I don't even think that was good either, but, um... I'm just going to pass. Go ahead. Oh, now I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Okay. I really wasn't expecting you to pass. Okay. Well, I guess I have to deal with this as cleanly as I can. Snipe Hunter is going to take out guard. Yeah, I'll take 500. I don't feel too good about throwing Snipe Hunter out like that, but kind of what oh, we have he, to do here. He's off the field. Yeah. Get those darks <laughs> out of there. All right. This feels like the way I'm going to get anything rolling if I can. I'm going to summon my own Snipe Hunter. <laughs> Was that a pun? Really? Oh, well, hey! I didn't even think about it. Yeah, I just got the braids, dude. Joke I master. swore you did. You said that intentionally. Is the summon uh, okay? I'm, I'm going to Book of a Moon on summon. Yikes. Uh, yeah. All right, bro, go ahead. That feels good. Okay. That doesn't exactly feel good, but eh, it's not the worst. Kind of want to put you on a clock here, but I also don't want to like give up my precious cards that Snipe Hunter could just use to completely wreck you to some degree. I'm just going to attack. That's fine. Nope. You already knew what it was. And main two, I'm going to go ahead and set. And I think I will just pass the turn. Go ahead. All right. I'll draw. Cool. I'll normal summon Sasuke. That's a big one. Yeah, and I'm going to get over your Snipe Hunter. I will take 300. Cool. Uh, I'll just pass. Go ahead, man. Okay. I will draw. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. I'm going to flip up Magician oh! of Faith. Oh, come on. Yeah. My Snipe Hunter is banished, but I'm going to take this Smashing Ground and add it back to my Yeah, hand. ground's fine. We're going to smash away the Sasuke. Yep. And uh, Gage. You don't have Sook. He's oh, back. screw you. Yeah, I'll take three. <laughs> All right, what are you pitching? Let's see. One, two, three on the left, four, five, six on the right. We're going to hit this one. Man, I was holding on to that. Ooh, nice hit. I mean, with Dimensional Fisher up, it's, it's kind of whatever. Yeah, but. it's not easy. Main phase two. I will go ahead and set this card face down. Go ahead, duelist. I'll draw. Running low on cards over there. Yeah, it's not ideal. I'll summon Tsukiyomi, and I'll flip your white. That is fine. Battle phase, let's get over your white magical hat. Sure. All right, well, you better have the Tsukiyomi. I'm just going to go to the end of my turn. I'm going to put that Tsuk back in my hand. I mean, maybe? Ooh. Well, I'm going to change this faith to defense. Okay. I'm going to set a card face down, and I'm going to pass to you. All right, I'll draw. Now, you can summon your Tsukiyomi if you want, but you're going to have to flip my Magician of Faith face down if you yeah, want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, or I could flip down my own Tsukiyomi too, you know? But <laughs> All right, I'll set and pass too. I liked your play a lot. Well, you put it I would have much too. preferred the first option, but Yeah, I'm sure okay. you would have. <laughs> uh, 
I also like this option, though. I'm going to normal summon Mystic Swordsman level two. I'm going to swing into this set monster. Do flip effects trigger? They do not. Dude, no. Man, why'd you have to do that to me? You got rid of my... We can't make it easy for you. No, you got rid of my Night Assailant. Ooh, okay. Trying to uh, luff me out a little bit there. I'll just pass. Go ahead. I'll draw. All right, well, let's go for number two. I'm going to flip down that Swordsman. Eh, that's fine. Okay. Battle phase, get over it. That is fine. Dope. All right. Uh, your turn, Duelist. Give me something good here, please. Was I good? It's not bad. It's just not good in this particular instance. I'm going to just put you in the same position as last time and just force you to flip my mob face down. All right. Well, let's see if you got it a second time here. I'm going to summon Snipe Hunter. That's fine. That's fine? That's fine. I did not expect to get this far. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that always the best feeling? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's get a graveyard presence going here. I'm going to activate Snipe Hunter, okay? Okay. I'm going to discard Exile Now remember... First. Okay, it's going to get banished. Okay, yeah. you're going to go for DeFi? Going for the DeFi. Let's see if you get it. Yes! Oh. Yes, I needed that. Okay, so get rid of Okay, so on the resolution of DeFi, I'm going to flip Macrocosmos. <laughs> <laughs> Two steps forward, one step back. I think that's the wrong saying, but okay. Oh, whatever, whatever. What opposite way around. Um... <laughs> For you, yeah, it's definitely the opposite. <laughs> Man, come on, dude. Why'd you have to do that? You can just pop the macrocosmos, too. It's a 66% chance to hit. Yeah, I'm going to go for that, too. We'll pop the macro, okay? So wow. I'll, I'll discard this smashing ground. Targeting macro. That's going to... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. All right, ready? It's going to miss. Please right, miss. It's gonna miss. Please miss. Yes! Oh, yes. That would have been right, good. All right, that feels good. Okay. Is that all right? We still good? We're good. All right, battle phase. Let's get over this uh, moth. Finally. Sure. All right. It goes to grave. Wow. First time something has gone to grave and like. I know, right? <laughs> Dude, uh, your turn. Give me a good draw. That is a good draw. Kaiku, oh, baby. No! Bro, Kaiku. No graveyard insane. for you, Gage. Damn. <laughs> okay. Are you going to banish the Snipe Hunter, too? Of course I'm going to banish the Snipe Hunter. Yeah. And then you have no other cards you can banish. No other monsters. Yeah. It only banishes monsters. Unfortunately, that would be broken, but I will just pass the turn. Go ahead. And I will draw. All right. It's back. Okay. So I knew you had this. This was the only card left in your hand. Tsukiyomi is such a good card. It is. I think the fact it keeps retreating to hand is so good too. Yeah, because it's like built-in protection. I might regret this. I'm going to wing blast your Tsukiyomi in response. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Suk okay. will go to top. Your thing gets flipped still. And, Correct. And uh, I'm just going to pass. Go ahead, man. I know you're drawing Suk next turn. So let's just go ahead and flip up this Kaiku. Hit in for 18. And main two, I will just set. And we will set this card as well. Go ahead. Cool. I'll draw. Weird. It's like you knew what I, I drew. All right, cool. I'll Suk the Kaiku and get in there. Kaiku set. Kaiku has been removed. Awesome. Go ahead, man. Your turn. Okay, Gage, <laughs> you're not about to like the direction this game's going to take. Why, what you got? I'm going to set a card face down. Let's roll, No way, Jar, dude! <laughs> you put yeah! it back in! Oh, and the, re the thing is, I thought about playing this too. No way! Oh, Draw my five, God. my man. Draw five. All right, this is going to be a good game. Wow, that was like the worst five cards I could have possibly drawn. <laughs> I was hoping to just like win immediately after this, and that was just horrible. Get in for 700. And not quite that easy, huh? Unfortunately, like it's not bad, but it's, let's say it's less than desirable. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set one, two, three. Jesus. And I'm going to pass the turn. I'll draw. I'm going to dust shoot you. All right, that's fine. Okay. That's a pretty good grip, huh? Pot of Greed, too. And you have your Cold Wave. That's a lot of good cards. You're going to Pot of Greed into two more, which is even more annoying. I'm going to shuffle back the Spy. Spy? Sure. Yeah. Fire off the pot. Hit me with the Imperial Order. I wish I was that good at this all game, right, but unfortunately, right. that's going to resolve. Cool, I'll draw two. That would have been amazing. That would have been with that hit, with the hand that you just had. Order would have just won me the game. Yes, correct. All right, let's see here. I'll set that. You know what I'm actually scared of, Alex? What? I'm scared of your second book of moon and what you might do with that jar. 
<laughs> Why, Gage? That's like kind of scary. Um, go ahead, man. We're not playing like empty jar or anything. Over <laughs> here. I don't know. I don't know why you're worried. <laughs> Could you imagine empty jar? Like, <laughs> uh, okay, I will draw. I'm going to fire off Regeki. Okay, interesting. That does out the Spirit Reaper. It does. That's fine. Assuming it was Spirit Reaper, of course. Well, you know, Gage, I do like to gamble. All right, you flip it down. Go ahead. And I'm going to think for a sec, because I'm going to be very sad here if this wears off. I know you have a wing blast, and if there's a card to force it out, it's this. <laughs> Jar doesn't, no, it discards as a effect. All right. All right, that's fine. He's letting it go. Actually, wait, no. No, I don't want to let that go. Alex, I'm so scared, bro. I don't know what to do, man. Uh, I got through your one DeFi, your one macro. All right, you know what? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. I will go ahead and... Set a card face down, and we're going to flip up the jar. All right. I'll chain Wing Blast. Okay. Doesn't matter what I pitch. I'll pitch the Borg. Sure. I will stack the one you just set. Okay. Goes to the top. Okay. And then we'll resolve jar. We both draw five. Okay, so you still have Cold Wave in the back row. You also still have a card that I don't know because I believe I've seen everything because you drew to six. I shuffled one back, so you had five. Reaper, Pot, Smashing, Cold Wave were the others, and Wing Blast. So I'm fairly certain I don't know what your other card is. Let's go ahead and normal summon a good old Snipe Hunter. Yeah, Snipe Hunter's fine. Snap Hunter's pretty good after a Morphing Jar, don't you think? Yeah, he's all right. Okay, I'm going to activate the effect. Okay. Uh, we will pitch this Magical Merchant for cost. I'm going to randomly choose which one here before I roll. So I'm going to target this back row. That's going to resolve. That's fine. Okay. Do I want to go again is the question. It's the worst thing in the world if I go again. What am I afraid of? What have you used up so far? Two Wing Blasts or a Geki Break. I think you have Dust Tornado in your deck still. Hmm. All right. I'm going to go to Battle Phase. Okay. 700. Yep, I'm going to take all of it. So 15 and 7. Okay, life's 12. getting pretty low. Feeling pretty good about that. I'm going to go ahead and set a card, and I will pass the turn. Okay, I'll draw. Full grip, Gage, full grip. Full grip, Alex. I'll activate Rhoda. Rhoda's fine. I have no targets for Rhoda. <laughs> 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 this game has been going on a hot minute, dude. Are Holy they all crap. in the Banished? Sasuke, Didi Warrior? Oh my Exiled god, I think Force, they are. All, yeah, they're all gone. Exile Force 2, wow, that was everything. Ah, oh, man, what do I know you got back there? You don't have any more books. Probably got another Do you blast. know any of these cards? I don't know if you do. I don't know any of them. Like, I, I don't know anything that you've added, but I, I like... I know what you have in your deck generally. I think you have like two more wing blasts. I don't know if you're back on Regeki Break. You might have Saku. You already used TT. Yeah, so there's some things you can rule out. There's Bottomless. Bottomless is really fucking bad. Um, there's a lot of things that you have to worry about. They also could all be spells in all fairness. I did Jar twice, so. Ooh, okay. All right, I think I might have a good play here. All right, okay. I'm going to summon Snipe Hunter. Leading with the Snipe Hunter. I feel like I have to do something, so I'm going to bottomless. Okay, I'm going to chain enemy controller. And I'm Ooh. Gonna tribute my Snipe Hunter. I'm going to take control of yours. Respect. Okay. I'm going to chain compulse targeting my Snipe Hunter. Oh, man. Alex, man. That was a hell of a game, too, dude. <laughs> Yeah, you checkmated me here. You got me. Wow. Good Morphing game. Jar did its job. Oh, my God. That's insane, dude. What a fucking game. I had dust back there. You had the correct call that I still had okay. back there. So okay. if you would have activated, I would have just chained. What are the rest of these? Okay, I want you to take a guess. Like, you think you know my deck so well. I think you've so, got one more Wing Blast set back The there. one you are actually targeting is the yeah. Wing Blast, funny yeah, enough. Yeah, okay. I think you have, um, you don't have any more books. There wasn't anything playable in the new set. You could have another Wing Blast. Do you have another Wing Blast back there? I don't. So the last two cards, one you're never going to guess. Uh, I did have a My Body, so okay. I had a little bit of insurance from Snipe Hunter. Even if, like, you would have taken mine, I could have, like, potentially just used that. And then uh, Dark Hole was the other one. Uh, and uh, okay. you never would have guessed that yeah, one. Yeah, no, no. I, I didn't stand yeah. a chance then if you had that. That was so hard because, like, the thing is, is I had... Here, I'll show you the rest of my hand. So I had, like, Witches and Grief. I was trying to dig for CED. 
with the, the jar. Of course. So like the jar, like man, there were so many different points in this game that I felt like I could have played differently. The first time you resolve the jar, I had the dark hole in hand, but I knew I already had a way to out your kaiku. So I was like, why would I waste the dark hole now? And I'll just wait till you commit more. Sure. And then you yeah. happen to have jar, and I was like, fuck. Well, that's useless. So that was rough. And then like there was the second time where you were gonna resolve jar, and I had the way to stop it. I had the way to like wing blast your jar. But the thing was, I was like, if I pitch a light, which was the Zabor, I have a way to draw CED and I have a way to resolve it with Cold Wave. So I was like trying to plan ahead, but you just had the out for every single time, dude. Oh my God. Yeah. Wait, so, okay. So when I first resolved Jar, I literally drew five spells and traps. Really? I <laughs> drew, yeah. I drew like Compulse. I, this might be wrong, but I drew like Compulse, Bottomless, Dust Shoot, Regeki, Book of Moon or something like that. Mm. And so I was just like, I wanted one monster and I play like 18 of them. So the odds of me seeing one were pretty good. I'm like, give me one monster so I can hit in for some damage. And I drew five spells and traps. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? I'm and lucky. Luckily, Man, no. I did have the Book of Moon to reflip Jar again. Uh, here's the thing, though. So, like, even if you stacked Jar, did you have a way to prevent it from going off again? The next turn? Right. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I had a way to stop. So that's the thing. So it's like, yeah, you would delay it by a turn, but it's still going to get flipped one way or another. Yeah. So I don't know if that was necessarily wrong of you to do that, because I kind of see your logic with the Cold Wave plus Zaborg logic. Like, if you drew Emperor, which, in all fairness, I had, like, three ways to deal with, but had I not had the ways to, or, I mean, Cold Wave I mean, makes it irrelevant, so yeah, it doesn't matter. So if you, if you didn't yeah. have the Snipe Hunter, which you already, did you go through one early in the game? I did, I think. Yeah, you did. You uh, went through your other one. Is it banished? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So you went through your other one, and I know you only have two because you only pulled. So Correct. I was like, you had to have the second Snipe Hunter. You had to have a way to out that Cold Wave, and then, like, I wouldn't stand a chance, but you did have it. You had the snipe hunter. So, yeah, it man, was, that uh, was. That was so close. That was a really good match, though. Holy crap! That was. I mean, I I can't believe that was just t game two. I thought we were in game three. So Dude. like, had you been able to turn that around, which morphing jar is a card that grants you the ability to do that. So I was kind of afraid about that. It could have easily gone the other way, and we could have headed to a game three. But that game two took an eternity. I also had snatch shield and breaker in hand. So oh, like, that's gross. Yeah, I was feeling it. pretty good about yeah. this one, but cold wave was gone. So like, I didn't have to worry about that. But emperor is just one of those cards. If I didn't have a way to to deal with it or you like baited my other cards i wouldn't have used this uh compulse and bottomless had i not had a way to stop emperor because i knew you had a light and a dark already engraved with is a borg and spirit reaper and that's also why i preemptively fired off like regeki earlier too just because like i knew i was going to flip jar i just had to get whatever value i could out of my cards just so i can refresh my hand and uh get it i also had dark hole i think i already said at that point so i'm like ah, i got one board wipe whatever Mm -hmm. uh, Man, but it's I just, mean, it, <sighs> it's such an uphill battle when I got to fight through like DeFi macro and the fact you opened it up. Did you open it up? I opened the DeFi and then I drew the macro when we were at that standstill where we each only had like two or three cards. And I was just trying to get like one monster to stick to the board. And I drew macro and I kept it in my hand for a turn because I'm thinking, OK, if I draw a wing blaster, a snipe hunter, I'd rather use the macro to pitch for that rather than uh, just setting it, which you destroyed it anyway. But I, and then so once I did get to a monster, I got to something. I don't remember. I'm just like, I'll set it, whatever. Maybe it'll be relevant. But to be fair, DeFi put in a lot of work. Look how many cards oh my DeFi God, yeah. banished. I think one of the turning points was it, I had to discard that CED and that did not feel good. Like I was trying so hard. I had that Snipe Hunter for, and I was trying to find like an opportune time to be able to like have enough monsters in hand so I could like, not discard them all off of DeFi, but get rid of your DeFi and still have a way to fuel CED. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get enough like to be able to uh, get that CED and keep it in hand. So I had to pitch it, and that did not feel good, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, DeFi and Macro, especially with how they play with your Snipe Hunter specifically, is actually even better for me because that means if you even want to attempt to pop either one, you're going to get one card banished, most likely, and then that's just, again, another way to stop you from getting to CED. I actually cut the Banishers of the Radiance. All I'm playing is DeFi and Macro for the uh, Banishing cards because I noticed in the last episode you were playing a much more just, like, cohesive kind of cookie-cutter sort of, like, old-school deck. 
you dropped all the Dark World stuff, and that was kind of the reason why I felt like I lost, aside from Jinzo, obviously, but Banisher and Dimensional, uh, not Dimensional, uh, DD Survivor, both of those cards are, like, fine, but, like, they don't actually do anything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not, like, Snipe Hunter. They're not Morphing Jar. They don't, like, progress your game state. They slow you down, but they don't help me do much. And so I was thinking, there's the new Dark World support in this set. Is he actually going to go back and play it? And I was thinking, I don't feel like he is, because even though those cards are not bad, you saw a good amount of success in the last episode playing without the Dark Worlds, and so I figured you weren't going to be on it, and that's why I also chose to main deck the Morphing Jar, and... When I drew it that game, my heart was pounding because I'm like, please don't have Dark Worlds. Please don't have Dark Worlds. Please don't have Dark Worlds. Do you want to hear something funny I did? So I I tried to like, I was going to throw you for a loop if I won this game. So I was getting like, I was trying to take notes of what you were doing. And I noticed like you weren't playing the DD Survivors or anymore. I actually buffed up. I played the second guard because I thought you still would. I actually side deck. My side deck is the entire Dark World package. Oh, I, yeah, I was going to smoke screen into the Dark World to throw you off. And now that I know you played Jar, that would have been crazy. I actually pulled I pulled one Dark World dealing. So I was oh, like, man, did that's you? A nice. Good. Yeah, just one, though. But I wish I would have gotten a couple more. But like the yeah. thing was, is I was like, maybe I could throw you off guard if I just side them all in. But if you were still on the macro DeFi strat, it was just it wasn't going to work. But now that I know, like, you've you've cut your banishers and your DD survivors and you're just playing those two cards because they're they're good against my strategy. Uh, maybe I might throw them back in, you know? Maybe I might. Well, just as you have your side deck plan, I have mine because I also have my entire macro plan in my side deck. Wow, because we were I both figured, ready for it. <laughs> I figured if you're still on the Dark Worlds, I need to make sure I have the swap out because I just have to shut that shit down. I cannot yeah. allow that to go through. And Banisher of the Radiance is still a pretty decent card. And I feel like hey you know we might as well have a good side deck plan for if he is still on it so it looks like we were both prepared for what the other one was doing if we had both side decked that's what's really interesting moving forward now that we both know that we have this strategy for the other person's archetype technically how is that going to work in like the next episode like next episode is uh what force of the breaker i think and again yeah. maybe we're not going to get many too impactful cards although rise of the storm monarchs in there so that's actually really good but aside from that how is this going to work because there's going to be this like meta on meta mind game where we're going to be like bluffing double bluffing each other because like I could like not play the macro cards and you play the dark world cards and I just get like smashed wholeheartedly or you know I have to like realize what you're gonna do and try to play accordingly you know maybe I flip a morphing jar and like you just like have all a whole hand of dark worlds and I just cry Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) it's gonna be scary like I'm like if there's one episode I'm gonna try jar it's this one but moving forward now that's gonna be more risky than ever (laughs) yeah lots of metagaming ahead I think geez that was such a close one too that game too took forever man I can't defy macro hell of a card I mean they put in a lot of work but the problem problem is with those cards they don't do anything like they're good against stopping your emperor but those cards just sat there and did literally nothing for so much of the game and i when i drew that macro uh cosmos especially dimensional fisher starting out was okay but even then like my opening hand was like not that good i think my opening hand was magician of faith book of moon defy and then Dekoichi and like one other spell or trap or something. I did not expect the game to turn out the way that it did based off of my opening hand. Not at mm-hmm. all. Man, really good game though, dude. Really good game. I really good game. I, oh, oh, from your packs. Did you play anything from the new set? I did not. I got a couple ultimate rares, which again are not anything. I think I got like an ultimate rare glow moss, which is kind of cool. Whoa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got a rainbow, which I know you would have maybe liked to pull. I got one DD Crow. I think. Me too. <laughs> so I got, I got I one even, as well. I didn't even get like a playset, unfortunately. I got Transmigration Prophecy, which is okay. It's kind of just like a slightly maybe better DD Crow in some instances. That was like it. I really wanted to play Six Sam, but we don't get the good Six Sam cards till much later on. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, You know what I thought might, we might have saw this episode, but we didn't? I thought we'd see Grand Mole. Did you pull one? I pulled three. Oh, I didn't pull a single Grand Mole. You didn't pull any Grand Mole. No, Damn. and that's one of my favorite cards. Yeah, so, like, I know. I'm, I'm, so I'm kind of 
of bummed about that, actually. I actually didn't even realize till just this moment that I didn't get mole. But wow, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I sided a mole. I didn't know if it was good enough to main deck it. I still don't know if it's good enough to main deck right now. But... I don't know. That card, if you have the tempo initiative, that card can be so good. Because like in the instance where I just had like jar set, if you had a monster already, you could just summon mole, bounce the jar and the mole back to my hand and just keep swinging in. And I can't mm -hmm. do anything about it unless I have a back row. Mm -hmm. So in simplified game states, mole is just insane. It, it depends, right? It kind of depends on, I feel like if I'm playing a super aggressive deck, mole probably isn't that good. Mm -hmm. But if I'm playing a very conservative deck, like I did maybe five, six, seven episodes ago where I played like flip control, I feel like mole would just be outstanding against that sort of deck. Yeah. That's good for you that you got the mole. I pff, I got wrecked on that I one. I can't man. believe Damn. you didn't get any mole. That's nuts, dude. Cyber jar the scenario all over again. The rares, like it, it just always seems to be so one-sided. It's so bizarre. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series. It's getting really exciting. These new sideboard plans that Gage and I have going on, there's going to be a lot of mind gaming. And until we get to a set that's going to introduce a ton of just extraordinarily powerful cards, you might be seeing a lot of those mind games continue to play out, but that's part of the fun. So hashtag Team Simo, hashtag Team Gage. Be sure to let us know down in the comments. But before we go, we have to shout out our patrons as always ways over on Patreon. So big shout outs today to Sharkman, Gray Lane, Pony Stark, Joshua Wiley, Tim, Sylvia Wilds, Michael Dente, Mystic Walk, Oli, GW, Jarvis Martin, G-Man 99, Logan Thomas, Matthew Fehrenbacher, Dragon Lord, Dolly Watt, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Emil Cohen, Synchro Guy, Adam Evans, Draconic, The Astral Rolf, Stephen Choppa, Kell of Devils, and Lear Roche. Thank you guys all so much for your support. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.